Good morning, this is Thursday of week two of your Physics 5 a day and we're on our second day of forces here. And we're starting out with the familiar connection between resultant force and acceleration. Just to make it absolutely rock solid clear, if you are accelerating, there is a resultant force on you. The only way you can be accelerating is if there is a resultant force on you and they're in the same direction. So a resultant force upwards means I'm accelerating upwards. Resultant force forwards means I'm accelerating forwards and so on. The formula, which I know you'll be very familiar with, is this one. But just remember that you can't put any old force in there. It's It has to be resultant force. I think it's a shame it doesn't have its own symbol because um, that would, I think, help it to be clearer. OK, so remember that you are always going to draw two force diagrams for any question on acceleration. The first one, you're going to put all the forces acting on the object. And the second one, you are only going to draw the resultant force. Right, this one here, I'm imagining um, a car. And this is the forward thrust force from the engine, due to the engine. And then this is the total resistive force backwards. So air resistance, friction, add it all together, that's the total resistive force backwards. Okay, um, I've also got a weight and a normal contact force. I've left them off because they're going to be cancelling out. In my question, this car is driving along the road. Okay, and so then on our second diagram, we draw just the resultant force and then we work out what it is. This one's bigger, so it's going to be in that direction and nice and easy 430 newtons. Right then, draw yourself a couple of force diagrams for this question. Right, so we're given the acceleration this time and the mass, so we can actually calculate the resultant force and it comes out as 14 newtons upwards. And so my second diagram, which we're drawing first this time, it, with just the resultant force on it, there we go, 14 newtons upwards. Now, what that tells me is that I know I'm going to have two forces on this object. I've got the weight downwards and I've got the tension from the rope upwards. What this tells me is that the tension must be bigger because otherwise the resultant force wouldn't be upwards. Now, we do have to calculate W. We're not told it. We have to calculate it using the formula. And so the weight comes out as... 69 newtons. Okay, so what I can write now is that I know that the resultant force is the tension minus the weight, and so 14 equals T minus 69, and I'm going to squeeze on up here, run out of room, that gives us T equals 83 newtons. <laughs> 